flat. We have, uh, we've had a few weeks where we haven't really had About three much, weeks now? About three weeks, where there hasn't been much in the way of waves. And what there has been has been sort of just lumpy, oh, wi lumpy just, windswell. Yeah, just slow period, windswell, just uh, not really even worth it. Been doing house tours, no. renovating. Renovating, which is, so, so this is not, if you've been following on Instagram, you'll know that we're building a new studio. This isn't the exact new studio. This is the wall which we used to sit this in front of. This is the old of. studio painted this white. This is the old studio painted white. The new studio is that way over there. Uh, hopefully, next time we come on, yeah, because we'll be on in two weeks' time. Yeah, yeah, next time definitely, 100%. we come on, we will be in the new studio. But for tonight, you've got a nice little white backdrop here with some, uh, you've got some pink colors. lights or red lights behind the, behind the boards. Got a bit of blue going on there, but it's a much lighter feel. So I can see there's a few people that have jumped on. If you are on, make sure you jump into the comments, give us a little hello, where about you tuning in from? But let's dive into, let's dive into this. Obviously, yeah. um, last week we did a, a live series, a Fix Your Surfing series, which was things that you can do on land to help you improve your surfing. And that had a really good response and so from that, we thought that we would spend tonight talking about things that you can do when the surf is flat, things that you can do to keep your surfing moving forwards when it's flat, because there's lots of ideas out there. A lot of people think that we need to just spend our time in the ocean. It is a thing of, uh, of debate that comes up time and time again. But so I actually like it. I misinterpreted when you first told me that what you okay. wanted to do for live. Yep. So I'm like, great, when it's flat, it's like, oh, thank the Pope. I don't have to deal with surfing. Because I kind of, like, from when I wake up to when I go to bed, it's just surf, surf, surf. Yeah. Like, on so many different levels, it's like me wanting to surf, it's surfing with friends, it's surf coaching, it's skateboarding, it's answering emails about surfing, it's Facebook on surfing, boards, boards um, it's just like surf, 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 surf. So, when there's no waves and I don't have to work, I kind of like, ah, oh, it's quite nice. I don't have to do surf today. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's different. So when you ask me, what do I do? I was going to say like, oh, renovations and, and gardening. <laughs> and it's quite nice. And cooking. I like to cook. Okay. So that is you. Yeah. Whereas the, the rest of the community, when it's flat, they want to be able to do something that, yeah, can, they want to that, make up. that can improve their surfing. So then I thought, okay, if I couldn't surf and I had the energy and I had the time that I wanted to invest into doing something, yep. um, you need to invest that energy in working on your awareness because awareness i think the word for tonight i'm gonna write this down is awareness is a massive thing yeah so most people when they watch themselves surf for the first time they they are unaware of how they surf they're unaware of where they are on their wave yeah so they they can't articulate what the turn felt like and what the turn looked like so when they do something, they don't know kind so, of what it looks so like. So they can't articulate what, what the wave looked like? Okay, so let me, let me put it this way. Dive a bit deeper there. Yeah, right. So imagine if I went to you and I said, okay, and here's a golf club and a golf ball. We're going to hit this ball 100 metres to the, the hole and try to get it in. Okay. And you just whack it, boom, 100% power, and you overshoot it. Mm-hmm. And then when you watch the video back, you go, oh, geez, so I overshot it by, I don't know, 10 meters or something. I need to tone down on my power. So you need to be able to articulate how much energy you are dispensing for that, t that, that hit to, to how far you hit the ball and all that okay, kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah. A lot of people when they surf have got no idea. They just do. Just pedal to the metal. Yeah, and they do at 100%. And when they get it wrong, they don't actually know why they got it wrong or how they got it wrong and so on. And... This brings me to the next thing. I watched some ladies surfing the CT today. We did. All right, we watched a couple of heats yeah. while, while we were roller painting and stuff. So um, I actually wouldn't mind bringing some of those up. And Which would, we, we, so we're, we're going to bring up some footage and Clayton's going to analyze that a little bit later on. Yep. But, so let's, let's not, so that'll be the, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that in a bit. But yeah, keep, keep going. Well, it, it was all about. Things that we can do um, when we are not surfing. And again, it's, a, it's about the awareness. So I was painting and I wasn't doing a very good squat because my hips are really tight and my knees, I've had three, uh, what do you call it, um, cartilage repairs. So I don't like bending my knees. It's like kind of sore and they click. So 
I, w I was trying to video Clayton painting low down earlier on. Yeah, I, I do this weird... You, you talk about poo man and crab I'm a studs. poo man painter. <laughs> Just because it hurts my knees and I don't like to, to bend them much. So, but the first thing you said, you look funny, and then why don't you bend properly? Mm. But most people are poo man surfers, and I'm going, it's look, you look funny, why don't you bend properly? But if there's no awareness and no one's telling you that, yeah. and if you've done it for a certain amount of years, you're just going to default to that. Yeah. So it is about creating awareness around your body, but also awareness around your wave, like the wave that you're trying to catch and, yeah. and where you're trying to surf that and what, what is the wave telling you? Because waves actually do speak to you if you take the time to listen. Oh, I like that. Waves speak to you if you take time to listen. And I suppose this is really about just, it's, it's about take a, people taking a good hard look in the mirror and seeing what is actually really going on. Because people are, as you say, they, they, you're, okay. you're saying so, create awareness and there is no awareness. So what's the biggest problem with trying to fix surfing? Any ideas? The biggest problem with trying to fix surfing. Yeah, so you go, okay, I've got a problem with my surfing, it's X. Isn't it different for different people or is there like no, a generic it, one? No, it's pretty much the same for everyone. Okay, go on then. Okay, so if you want to improve your surfing, you probably have to take one or two steps backwards, okay? And your ego suffers because of that. And a lot of people aren't willing to suck for a while before they improve. So you've got to take two steps back fix your foundations, and yep. then you can move forward. But a lot of people just want to move forward and they, they don't, the ego gets in the way and they won't actually take the two steps back. So they just kind of plateau out and get frustrated. Yeah. So the, I think the ego is a very big thing that gets in someone's way too. It is, apart from I've got Paula Abdul's, I think it's Paula Abdul. I've got, I'll take two steps forward, I'll take <laughs> two steps back. Almost she had the fox, it was, it was her in the animation. Right. Anyway, showing my age a little bit there. Uh, cool, well, let, let, let's dive into that. First of all, Marie uh, is in lockdown in Sydney. Hi, Marie. Hi, Marie. Um, I feel for anybody who yeah, is we in Yeah, we were there last week, it sucks. Not Sydney, but lockdown. Yeah, Sydney's been in it for, for a long time. I wouldn't, I, I feel sorry for anybody who, who, Victoria, who, who so. is... Yeah. Who is in oh, Sydney's been in for, in for a while now, and Victoria's back in there again. What's your speciality dish? What you, you, you said about uh, about cooking before. Just uh, I'm just doing a real quick thing of who's in the comments here. My speciality dish. Yeah. What do I like cooking? Yeah. <laughs> um, I enjoy making curry. I don't know if you know this, but um, like obviously from South Africa. And no shit. <laughs> in Durban, in South Africa, they've got the second largest Indian population in the world. And they make some amazing curries. So curry. Yeah, so I like doing curries, I like doing Thai food, uh, Mexican. I, I just have a glass of wine, relax and cook. Now, interestingly, uh, you were just saying about uh, one step forward, two steps back, yeah. people being willing to suck. And uh, you probably would have heard, because we made quite a lot of noise about it, but last week we released the 12-week program uh, which we're super excited about. We've got a lot of people that already jumped on. They're, they're doing their first work, their first week. And a big part of that is literally going backwards. It's going back to those fundamentals and really starting back with what you might think would be something really simple. But what we're finding and the feedback from everybody is that this is gold. People haven't really, they haven't had that awareness around those, those things. We've got John. Hey guys from the sunny coast. Your 12-week program is awesome. Week one, BOSU drills have got me working hard and seeing some progress already. And that's just in one week. That's just in, in, in one week. And I don't want to turn this into a big plug here. So, you know why you know it's working hard is... Good I work, think, John. And this is going to go back to, again to the, the CT surfing that we've done. Yeah. If you're standing wrong... Okay, let's say you've got to pick up a heavy object off the floor. Uh, weighs 40 kilograms. If you bend your back using your back muscles, whereas someone with right, the right technique will use their legs... Yeah. Now, if you've been doing it wrong for a long time and then you start to use your legs, you're going to go, whoa, I'm working hard. Yeah. But you're actually working correctly. So, yeah, John, that's the, the, the two steps back, getting those legs strong, because from week two onwards, once you start getting stronger, everything becomes easier because mm. your technique is better. Okay, we've got Carve Media saying guilty. Got no idea what that's to. So anything that, uh, that's gone wrong, then it's Carve Media's oh, fault. Guilty, just guilty for not <laughs> wanting to go back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey guys, looking forward to seeing some more footage of Clay's dance moves. That's from the little, you don't know what gif I posted up, but there was a... Oh, the set that... Yeah, yeah you doing yeah. all the, on the beach. We've got hello from Brazil. Uh, that's, we got Luke, Luke, it's either Luke or Jeremy in the background. So thanks to John. Uh, we'll get into this content in a minute. We've got 
a few of you on here, just jump on and say hi. So do you, you think guys epoxy boards are better for those surfers migrating to shorter boards as opposed to the standard PU? It got a really quick answer to that because I, I want to try and stay on topic. Okay, so you're overthinking epoxy versus PU. Um, don't even stress about it. Basically, the thing that you're concentrating on when you're going shorter is you're heightening all your sensitivity. Mm -hmm. So basically, everything just speeds up. So if you've got good technique, your board reacts faster. If you've got bad technique, your board reacts faster. So you've got to make sure that your body is doing things slowly and smoothly. Okay. Do another quick 60 seconds of comments, and then we're going to get into okay. actual stuff. Uh, now, how you feel, Clayton? Seven ops on the knees. No, see, I was trying to bend the knees all the way. Yep. Okay. <laughs> so first time. Oh. Looking fresh. Ah, oh, Stefan. First time here. The subject couldn't be better. Greetings from landlocked Austria. So, so this this is also the so this this content tonight yep. uh, is perfect for people like Stefan, who people who are landlocked, and we've got a lot of people who are in the insiders group that are, are in Germany and places well, like in, that where there is lockdown, no. Ocean. Some people are only allowed moving within a ten kilometer radius. So if you live twenty kilometers from the beach, you can't go surfing. So there, there are a lot of people in lockdown who are missing out on yeah. surfing, um, but would still like to keep all those muscles engaged and intact so that they don't lose it. Yeah. So I got Luke, our main man behind the scenes, looking fresh, boys. We've got hi from France. Cover media is laughing. Uh, Curry, the correct answer. Yeah. Hattie from Cape Pete. Town. Hey, Denton. Um, can you oh, okay. start on front foot turning? I feel like it won't engage the rail if you don't so start it. Front, front foot track. turning. Yes. Okay. So we actually did. We did this last week. Yes. Uh, on the, the cardboard. So, so if you go to to the Ombi Instagram. Go to IGTV, we did a Fix Your Surfing series. On day four, we did a, a whole little training video on front foot surfing, which is something that you can practice on land and all you need is a piece of cardboard. It was an introduction to the cardboard surfer. Okay, so in answer to, is it iron? I think it's iron. 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 So, um, is it up there? Okay, I feel like it won't engage the rail if you don't start from the tail. So... The rhyme there. Yeah. So I don't understand. Okay, so so you're saying that if this is just okay. So imagine you're you're an, a pilot and you're flying, okay, and you're going okay. I'm going to go I'm going to bank and I, I want to turn, but you're saying the airplane won't turn unless it first does like this this lean back, and then it's got to pivot and turn. So the 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 crux of the problem is you're not leaning. Um, so, what? From an intermediate's point of view here, and, and, and a way that's, that's really helped me understand this, is I can kind of see what, what Ion's saying here, in that if you think two-dimensionally, then yeah, you could think a bit like this, yeah, so, so turn like this. But as, soon as, as you said to me, as soon as you said to me, you've got to think about it in, in that, in that third this. dimension. I'm going to answer this, I'm going to answer this in the lady surfing. Okay. Because the one was stay, doing stay tuned. back foot pivots and the other lady was doing rail surfing. So the answer's coming. Hang in there. Okay. We've got Donovan. Donovan is also in the 12-week program. He's loving it already. So we're only in week one and everyone's loving it. Hey, guys, what about paddling technique and how to hold yourself in the prone position? Coming That's, up tonight. But, well, how to hold yourself in the prone position. That is covered in week one of the 12-week of the challenge. There is a BOSU exercise, which, which we have, which is about holding that prone position. So there's, there's something within, yeah. the, within the 12-week the, the program. Um, one of the 12-weekers might want to jump in and, and share it if they want to. Um, uh, so, John, okay. Okay, that was just John again. John, awesome. Thanks very much for... Thanks, John. Thanks, Tibor. Loving the... Tibor, another, another, another tropic program of fish. Okay, let's, let's, let's get into some... Let's, let's get into some content here. Okay. Your and bank in aviation. Your and bank in aviation. Does this apply to surfing? I don't know what your so, means. So, 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 banking is banking, and your is you... I'll, I will quickly yawn. Is that like sleep deprivation your, when you haven't slept on the your, plane? No, that's yawn. Your um, uh, plane, plane definition. Here we go. Your plane definition. An aircraft is flight in flight, is free to rotate in three dimensions. Your nose left, nose left or right, about an axis running up and down. Pitch, nose up or down. Yep. And and roll rotation, so uh, I think yours one of those. 
What is a euro okay, on a plane? The, okay. Oh, the, the movement of the nose of the aircraft perpendicular to the wings. Too complicated for me. I'm just too so fat. There's a lot of. That's a lot of big words. Uh. That's higher grade stuff. <laughs> but yes, I think you're right. Okay. Cool. Let's get into let's get into the content. We've got um, Ashley there. Who's this is this is somebody who hasn't been able to surf. Been about five weeks since had a surf and massive withdrawals. Been doing a bit of skating. Uh, but I've spooked myself a bit, has had a bad fall. Any tips on gaining confidence with the surf skate? Yes. Um, you don't have to go fast when you're surf skating, number one. But you're, but where's your, where's your mic not going to yeah. you? So, 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 you don't have to go fast when you're surf skating. Yep. There's the other thing is that you don't want to stand on the back half of the board. Mm. Um, keep your weight centred over the front foot. That way you're always going to be stable. And use your hands like steering wheel. Keep your hands up. Um, yeah. If you drop your hands and bend your back, you're going to kind of want to fall. If you've got pressure on your back foot, you're going to want to fall. Um, so, yeah, keep your pressure on the front foot. It's super, super important. Yeah. Right, cool. I'm going to stay out of the comments for a bit now. Okay. Let's get into some content. So, tonight is about how we can still get stoked, get really excited about surfing, even when there is no waves. We turn up at the beach, it's, it's just... It's <coughs> awareness, awareness, awareness. That, yep. like, that is the word for the night, is awareness. So it's, it's all about awareness, but what can we... What sort of things can we do to keep progressing our surfing, but when we're on land? Now, obviously, we've got a lot of this within, well, within mm, the 12-week programme. Can we bring up the waves? Let's bring and up some then waves. talk about how do we fix those issues. Okay, let's, let's do that. Who do you okay. want first? So, uh, so we've, we've, we've got... So, we, well, while we were painting today, we had the the WSL on the girls uh, the girls heats. We, we was, yeah, we missed the guys. Yep. We were busy sanding. You were sanding. I was drinking tea. Yes, coffee. watching. Clem was watching me work. Um, Supervising. So let me let me let me bring up some. So let's let's do him afterwards. Okay. We got we got some Mikey February coming up, and I've noticed something before. I got a little excited. I get excited again already. Hang on. All right, All right, bring up the iPad. Hang on. Here we go. All right. So we had a heat with Steph Gilmore and... Uh, Hennessy. Hennessy. Bruce Hennessy. Yeah. I think I'm right. pronouncing that right. So let's play the waves. Really nice first turn. Big bank on the second turn. Okay, so we will play it again, but after watching that... Um, I'm pause it. Uh, next, we have Steph Gilmore. Is that right? Yeah, and then Steph comes up afterwards. Boom! Okay. So she finishes. Okay, so first of all, just if, if that anyway, was like. I'm going to do this. Oh, look at that cleverness. <laughs> so, whenever you eat a really good meal, you always want that the, the, the foretaste, then the middle. What, middle curry that you just made, and maybe? Then the aftertaste, that the thing that it leaves behind in your mouth. Yep. So, what kind of. What taste did that leave in your mouth when you watched her surf? Okay, that's, that's what I want to ask everyone. And then watch Steph Gilmore. Check this out. Glides into that way. Get ready, guys, because we're going to ask you a question. No actually. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, let's go big, 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 big. Sorry, my, my mistake. I got, so yeah, let's, let's start this again. I got so impressed with my technology, I forgot to use it properly. Okay, so look at the paddle stroke. That was like a one arm paddle, an Oreo biscuit. Look how, look how slowly she gets to her feet. All the time in the world. And then watch this. Rail turn. Boom. Boom. I think this was the, uh, the moment where you knew you dropped paint on the floor when you were watching this. Uh, yeah, oh, I was. was right. oh. oh, no, that's right. You weren't doing any work. I probably spilled coffee. Okay, so what we're going to do... Right, let me, bring you, let, me bring you, let me bring you back up bigger again. So, so you're going to ask a question. Yeah, am I going the right way? Yeah, no, let's rewind that back to Brennessy's wave again. So you're back to Brissa. Okay. Okay, so, clearly there's, a, there's two different styles of surfing. Who's looked, the question when I asked, who looked like it was easy for them? A or B? Okay, here we go. So we're going to watch them again at normal speed. Or, or yeah, at normal speed. Oh, hang on, I'm still going backwards. Let me make it smaller there. 
It's good, isn't it? Like the old cassette where you have to rewind, play, rewind, play. Yeah. Okay. So from the take. Right. Here we go. Yeah. For, from, from, <clears> from the takeoff. And so, so what, what's everyone watching for? Okay. So. Someone's already answered. The, the difference between the two. Yeah. Okay. So the first thing okay. Tibor said definitely Steph. B. Okay. So. B would be Steph. I'm going to assume. So that's Barissa. Uh, I think... So after these waves, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to look at their bodies and see how they're both moving. Yep. And I'll, I'll compare Here we go. Here we go. the two here's, bodies. Here's Steph. Steph's up. Do you guys, just so you know, I am, I am seeing the other questions. There's a few comments and questions that have come in. Uh, I'm not ignoring them. Uh, we're going to stick to content. We'll come back to questions again towards the end. Okay, so there's a consensus that it looks like Steph's not trying as hard, or, or sorry, she, she's finding it easier. So let's just let's break it down and try to figure out why. Okay. okay. So on the first wave, from the get go. Okay, as Hennessy paddles in, she's got her hands down low, and on the compression, she makes her chest Ooh, touch the knees. I like that little. Cat Brown, no, no, no mini turns between turns, all flow. Exactly, yeah. she's just going rail surfing. So she takes off, so. We've got, we got Anthony in, so I'm sure we have some of the comments that people are noticing here. So, uh, so if, you have, if you have noticed something, then pop it in the comments and I'm gonna try and post them up. So Anthea says, um, hi Anthea, top half of, the, of Barissa's body seems uh, too noisy. Cat uh, Brown. So if you, if you look at, if you look at her. <laughs> Profile picture, Cat Brown is literally a brown cat. If you look at her uh, compression, she's actually bending the hips, not really bending the knees too much. Yep. Okay. Like, like you painting. Yes. So the problem with that Duffy, is that... Duffy, I think it is. Steph's, she's flowing. So there's a big thing about flow with Steph. Sorry, I can be interrupting you, but I'm just trying to... When she tries to extend to go up the wave, think of someone on a trampoline. You want a straight back on your extension to go up. Mm. She's got her back bent. So let's look at her when she comes off the bottom... Okay, the chest is really, really low. Th this is Ooh. stifling her compression and extension. Yeah, pizza and money. Hang, hang on, hang on. Ash so Ashley, uh, her movements are just so fluid and more graceful. That only comes uh, from a natural feel flow. Okay, so why yep. has Steph got a natural feel and flow? Well, we know if you pick oh. up something... Go put it up. Correct, Pete. yeah, you put that up. Pete. Here's the answer. Steph is more upright. That was one of the first things that you said to me. You said, you said, just notice how much more upright she is. Uh, Barista, you were saying she's folded. She constantly looks like she's trying to put her, her boobs on her knees, her chest on her knees. Yeah, so we know that if you're picking up a heavy object, you use your legs, not your back. So go, she's Tibor. using her back muscle, whereas oh, Steph uses the legs. I'm loving this. Everyone's like really sort of seeing stuff here. Barista yeah, moving top and half too much and double pumps, not conducive to flow. Okay, well, the reason why she's double pumping is she's pushing really hard on the feet. Mm. Okay, so let's, let's continue this because otherwise... So there's a big push. And even there, she's very, very... Um, the, the back is bent and the chest is nearly touching the knees again. Yeah. Okay, so on the turn, she's pushing really hard. And the thing that you'll notice is that she actually loses speed through the turn, where Steph gains speed. Uh, that, that, that really good turn is, is in a bit later on in the video. Hang on, Alan. <laughs> that's why I'm getting excited. Obvious answer is Steph. Uh, so Alan Thompson, obvious answer is Steph, but there's so much emphasis on attacking... On, on, sorry. There's so much emphasis on attacking aggressive style these days. I wonder who got the highest points according to the judges. It was Steph, but only by a very small Steph amount. Steph by one. So I almost... I would have given Steph... I don't even think it was one. It was, it was like point... Point five or Hennessy something. Hennessy got like a that. five. Steph got a, a six point something. Right. Yeah. My point being is that I feel Steph uses so much more of her wave face. Mm. So if you have a look at this, um, the turn, it, it's almost cut a little bit short. Whereas I do feel Steph's got way more flow and uses way more of the wave face. Also, Steph seems to accelerate through her turns. Mm. I mean, Hennessy seems to burn off speed through the turns. Yeah. So what I'm seeing with her, I'll just go in slow mo and I'll chat over it. So. The chest really low, making it awkward to extend. And then 
pushes really hard and loses speed. And then pushes really hard there, loses a bit of speed, again loses a bit of speed there. And she's here is where she's really busy. Look, so watch the board. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, mid-face turn, mid-face turn, readjust, boom. So if you went back, she's almost going like this on the wave, mid-face turn, and kind of like that. Okay? Like a drunk worm. No. I mean, she, she, look, she's trying really hard. No, your, your line was like a oh. drunk, like, looked like a drunk worm. Correct. Okay, now, check this out. Takes off. Hardly paddles. Can you see how, how the hands are high as she takes oh, yeah. off? There, boom. You cut, the arms are going up a lot higher straight away, and that gets your back straighter. Okay? Then she, she sees this very steep part of the wave, and she goes, whoa! So you can see the wave's a lot more steeper, so mm. she's using that. Let me, get, let me get Alan's coming out of the way. There we go. So she does a cut down, and that downward force gives her so much more speed. Mm. So what she's doing is where she's using her body and powering up on the body, Steph is using the wave, and it's looking so much more smoother and faster because of that. So it's really smart surfing. Look at the rebound off the foam. She almost goes vertical off the foam, and then she just stands in a neutral stance. So this comes back to your very earlier thing, which was, and I wish I'd written, it, wish it written down the exact word you said, which was the wave will talk to you if you listen. Yes. And that's, that's it. So right over there, Steph is feeling the wave and she's, she's like tuning into the wave as what does the wave want? Yeah. Whereas Henna, she's like imposing her will on the wave and sometimes it doesn't always pan out. Yeah. Okay. So Steph's more relaxed and then her timing's a lot more on point and the flow's more on point. So look at the compression. Those were, those were knee bends, beautiful, nice extension. See the hands up? Look how much longer and smoother she holds those turns for. And then off the foam, and again, she just relaxes. So each time she rebounds off the foam, the foam gives her more speed, more drive, more yeah. acceleration. So I absolutely love it. So look at the speed here. Bang. And she just stands. So there's, mm. there's none of that, like... <laughs> Like, like all of this, staying busy, it's just clean lines and clean surfing done with so much feeling. Yeah, now, interestingly here, so you're saying that, and, then, and I want to I loop back in a moment because I want to try and bring this back into tonight's topic. Yep. But very quickly, so Celine, and, I, and I've heard you say this a lot, and I'm so glad that Celine's written this in. Does it ever happen where judges score lower because the surfer makes it look too easy? Which yes. Steph is making it look easy. Yes. But she didn't get scored um, lower, but, she should, but you, you, you were saying that so on, she should have got a higher score. On tour, like, it, it would frustrate me to I, I'd not want to watch anymore because Mick Fanning would lose heats doing immaculate, perfect surfing. Mm. Like, he'd catch a wave and surf it top to bottom in the pocket perfectly and get a six. Yeah. And then someone else would, like, flail along mid-face, mid-face, looking for an air section. Fair enough, yes, they do a decent air and they'd get a higher score, like an eight for one turn. So that would just absolutely freak me out. Yeah, Kevin Moore. Uh, so Ar Ar Armando, Steph is straight, on rail, unrestricted, flowy, in the pocket, using the wave energy to get to the lip, so smooth and effortless, elegant. Okay, yeah. so again, this is what we're coming to tonight. Steph is creating time. Yeah. And she's creating space, and she's using that really, really well. So what we can do in our everyday life is you need to get the timing right on the things that you do. You need to create space to work around you. Like you laughed at me. I was trying to paint today, okay? And I was too lazy to move the table and the computer. So I was, I was awkwardly trying to paint, swearing at everything in my way. But I was the one who didn't take the time to move the stuff to do the job properly. And that's what I'm kind of saying about the surfing. You sometimes have to basically take two steps back, yeah. fix it, and then it'll be easier to move forwards. Yeah. Now, uh, Ashley also put in, 
Let me bring that up in a minute. I'll, I'll bring up that really cool term that she did in a minute. So agree, Clay, about Steph's use of the whole face. That seems to be a common feature of those really classic surfers. Oki, uh, Tom Curran, Mick Fanning, Rob Machado. Yeah, they're all using I, the... Okay, so there's a theme coming out here. All those surfers that you mentioned, the classics, Oki, Tom Curran, Mick Fanning, Rob Machado, Steph Gilmore, all of them have style. But what is style? It's, it's kind of using the wave smartly. And I think a lot of people learning how to surf, if they just relaxed and started to actually feel the energy and went, mm. this is a positive thing. Because a lot of people feel energy and they freak out. Yeah. Okay? And then yeah. once you feel that energy, you have to learn how to engage with that energy. And most yeah. of the times, it's not press on the tail and turn. It, it's, a, it's a lean and it's a twist off the top. And it's, it's trying to flow inside of your surfing so that is is really really important oh it was that one. Oh, oh look at there this it is, there, it is, there, it is, there it is hang on hang on hang on hang on um okay so, so there's a coffee cup out but okay okay hang, hang, hang on a second so right let me just reel this back now okay. to when the surf is flat because obviously we haven't got waves like this at the moment here um if you have got waves like this wherever you are then then good on you um but if it's flat, what can we do? Now, I was thinking here, you were talking about um, the whole being bent over, chest touching the knees. We, I can't remember whether it was day one or day two of the Fix Your Surfing, where we did that exercise where it was bend down and pick up the cup. Yep. And if you bent down by, by folding, then the chances are there's probably a good chance that you might be surfing folded over. Whereas instead, instead if you went down and if you, grabbed, lunged. If, if you lunged down. So that's either day one or day two of the Fix Your Surfing series so again it's something else that we can do on land and the whole point of doing it on land is to create that repetition so that you gain the muscle memory so that when you do end up going back in the water it should become more automated it should become more more, more natural yeah, rather than feeling like you're trying to write with your left hand if you're right it's kind of like every time you get something out of the cupboard or the fridge lunge into your surf stance mm. and then stick your coffee cup hand forward get whatever you want out of the fridge yeah. And then take it, put it down, and then just, just keep repeating that movement. Um, I, I can't express how important it is to start doing the right muscle memory. Yeah. Because if you do it outside of the water, in the water, at some particular point when you relax, you will remember, and then if you try it, you'll be surprised at what happens. Yeah, and I suppose this comes down to... There's, there's been a number of times now where, where when we've gone out surfing and it's either my last wave or it's one where I'm just messing about and you say that was the best surfing that you've ever done and it's normally because I'm not thinking about my surfing so much anymore. So I'm this kind of is just the horrible thing about surfing is that the harder you try, the worse you surf. Yeah. You actually got to not try and... Um, well, you were saying the same thing about when you did competition. When you're in the competitions, uh, during, during the heats, you would... Yeah. Ugh, and then so just tell, I, tell I would that surf the heat and I'd try my hardest and I just wouldn't post the scores. I wouldn't get the waves that I wanted to. And it was almost like as the buzzer sounded like, bah, the heat's over, I'd stand up on my, because you, you get about a minute's break between heats. So I'd catch my last wave in after the siren and I'd kill it. I'd, I'd, if I was getting the heat, I'd get like an eight for it. And my parents would go, why the hell did you not surf like that in your heat? Mm. And I was like, well, I don't know, but... In hindsight, it was like the pressure was off. Yeah. Like I didn't have to score. So I just relaxed and I, I, was, I was angry, but I wasn't trying hard. And I just, and also I wanted to surf to the beach because my heat was over. I had to get out of the water. So I, I flowed to the beach. But when I had a wave, I tried really hard and I killed my flow. So there's a, there a twofold. I didn't try to, um, I didn't try too hard. Yeah, I, I just surfed the wave in and I just flowed and my parents were like, wow, that was amazing. Could never really get it right in the heat. And that was just dealing with stress. Um, as soon as the stress is gone, um, like in a free surf, I'd have fun. Like I always made magazines, I got mm. covers, I did center spreads. My surfing was fun. I just didn't know how to deal with pressure as a 23-year-old on tour. Yeah, but I, I mean, I think you can even take that into, ev into everyday life. I mean, if you think about it, like if you... If you oversleep the alarm and then you end up waking late, you're then instantly stressed out. And then for the rest of the day, it's, it's, it's like things are constantly going wrong. But it's because you've, yep. you've started off in that, in that stressed 
way and that tension just sort of seems to attract more tension and things to just go wrong so i yeah i think that when, when, and once you stop trying things get so once you stop trying and try to be oh, this is a good way of saying it once you stop trying and instead focus on being aware that's when things start to get better that's, that's, is that a good yeah, way of i think it? when you're trying you're almost enforcing your will on a situation yeah. Whereas when there's awareness, it's kind of like you understand who needs what or, or what the situation requires. And then if you do just that, it's easy. Yeah. And within the, within the 12 week program, the, one of the weeks, uh, so you, if, if you're in the 12 week program, this is coming up. Uh, but, but, but one of the weeks is all about just listening to the wave. And it's about surfing without actually doing anything. Just yeah. letting it just, I don't want to give too much away because I want you to wait till the week comes up. But it's just about creating that awareness. And that's, I think that's sort of week four, week five, I think that is, where it's all about creating awareness. So let's have a, we're going to bring this, we're going to bring this turn up in a second. Uh, but let's have a quick look here because we've, we've, we've got a few comments. Oh, yeah, we've got lots of comments coming in. Okay. Uh, so John has said, Steph, Steph is a Rob Machado of women surfing. Oh, well, that disappeared off. So, uh, like, if you've ever been, uh, I've probably said this before, if you've ever been at a wedding and suddenly, unexpectedly, a couple get up and they just dance really well, it's like, it's mesmerizing. People just sit and watch. It's, it's like mm. if someone sings really well, they're like, they just demand your attention. Yeah. And Steph is one of those surfers because she moves well. Yeah. So you need to have awareness around how are you moving? Um, are you moving awkwardly or are you moving well? And that's something that you need to train out of the water and take into the water. Yeah. So Daryl's saying, it seems in comps that surfers are cramming in so much over style and flow. Yep. Yeah, I think that's just the thing about contest surfing. Yeah. Um, because the judges are pushing the surfers to deliver, to impress the audience, because bear in mind, you've got people watching. Yeah. And if it's boring, it's kind of like... No one's going to want to watch. Yeah, dance, monkey, dance. Exactly. Yeah. So like, here we go, come on, puppet, dance, dance. And um, the surfers are having to try force an air or force a situation. Yeah. Celine, got me lunging every time I feed the dog these days. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is interesting. Well, Mark, uh, do you guys think that Brissa is aware that she is bent over? Is it her natural style? Do you think she's aware? I think she's taking her natural style and she's overemphasizing it, pushing really, really hard and trying to trying to make bigger turns and make bigger scores, where um, if you extend your leg, okay, put it this way, if you watch her, if I oh, here we go. look in the, if I extend my arm and punch, after the extension, the power's gone, okay? But here we go. if I twist and punch, okay, I've got so much more power. So Steph is using her twist, whereas Hennessy is using her back foot push. And with the back foot, you can only turn about 90 degrees mm. on that turn before the turns are over and the fins want to release. Whereas with the twists, which is coming up right now, yeah. um, Steph can hold the twist and almost do a full, yeah. a full turn. At, at this point in time, I do want to say, because I feel like we have uh, bagged out Barissa here a fair bit. I just want to say, I would love to have surf like, uh, oh. <laughs> like Barissa. She's, she's amazing. She's an amazing surfer, but we're just doing it as a, as, as a comparison here. Uh, this is, this is, this is, I, I really like this comment. Smart people struggle to learn to surf and kite surf. Well, I agree with you because I am really struggling to, uh, <laughs> to learn to surf. <laughs> <laughs> That's all it's like Mutley the dog then when I laughed. Okay, sounds a bit like Ethan Ewing, love his style, but don't seem to transfer his scores in heats. Uh, South Africans are unfortunately not known to handle pressure well in competition. Until, they just won the rugby until the now. <laughs> uh, T-Ball's back on again. How do you try the worst? The how do you try the worst? Surf reminds me of uh, Mikey Wright announcing him going back to free surfing. He surfed so well in his heat yesterday. Yeah, maybe so because of okay, that that, that's a prime, prime thing. Have you ever noticed that when people announce their retirement, they go out with a bang? It's because they, they, they don't care anymore. Mm. They're not trying to get a result. They know that they, they're leaving. Yeah. So um, I think Mick Fanning, when he retired, he ended up coming third in the world or something. Everyone's just got to relax. That's what we've got to do. Just yeah. everyone's relaxed. Don't Donovan, so Donovan said it's the crowds. Uh, early when I'm first in my first two waves are great and then as the competition for waves increase my surfing deteriorates then Dave is the same as Donovan yeah blimey we've got a lot of comments tonight uh, right uh, 
we haven't got right. Everyone, stop typing a sec. I do. I do appreciate your interaction. Stop for our job. Right, let's bring it this way. Right, hang on. Let me just finish these three comments here. Okay. So, uh, Mikey surfed best as a wild card. As soon as he was on the tour, he did not do that well. Does riding electric skateboards help you surfing? Real quick answer. Go. Uh, yeah, it would probably help flow. Um, again, you, you're probably skating on the streets, which means you're, you're skateboarding flat. Mm. I am not a huge fan of skating in the streets unless it's just to learn your basics. Yep. Um, I think you need to start learning how to skate slopes and get inverted. Yep. So you can use your leans and twists and all that. And Pete agrees with Donovan on the whole crowds thing. Yep. Right, anyway. Right, jump into this. Let's get into this. Let me, let me remove okay. comments from the screen. Let me bring the iPad back up again. And let me, oh, hang on, let me get rid of that comment. Let me switch the screens around. And all right, all right, here we go. Just, 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 so look, she, just, she, just, just, just play it. Hang hey, on, whoa, whoa, take, whoa, whoa. take off slow mo. Oh, okay, <laughs> hang I'll, on. I'll play it, then I'll, I'll play it, and then and then go back. Sorry, I just, it's so good. Oh, that was so nice. She, oh, and then watch this, watch this. Zzz, bah, that was sick. Oh, it, let's go back to that. I'm, I'm hoping that that, that that came out really well. It's looking a little bit glitchy on my computer screen here. Um, I think that's just purely the, the excitement energy that is coming out of my head at the moment uh, when she did that, that first turn. She speeds up so much when she, turns, when she does a turn. Okay. So the first thing, oh. okay, she's just taking off. Where's she looking? She's looking ahead, reading that wave, and her awareness of what's unfolding I'll, in that wave. I'll tell you where she's not looking, at a board. Yeah, she's not looking at the board. And the first thing she does, look at the back arm. Boom, comes up. Look how high it is. So in, Coffee. in dance, if you're ballroom dancing with someone, if you, you have to support your partner and straighten their back, um, then they can rotate really well. So the big difference between Steph and, and Hennessy is Hennessy was really loaded with the back bent mm. and Steph's back is straight. Okay. Hey, now, Tyler. She uses her legs really well. And look, how, look at the extension. Boom. Yeah. It's amazing. And then watch this. She comes around. She's looking at the foam. She passes the coffee. Look at how big that twist is. Pass the coffee to the left hand side. Okay. <laughs> look at this. Look. Look at where the turn originated from. Look at that. Okay. She did not rush the turn. She's taking her time. She's creating space. And because she's got space, she's doing it slowly, but she's doing it smoothly. And then when she hits the foam, bang, look at the speed that she gets off that. And then again, she's, she's extending. Yeah. So it's like someone on a trampoline, you, you extend and you get that height out of the turn. So this is what we call in the program the cardboard slide. Yeah. Uh, and, and she's very, let, me, let me pause you there for a second. Go because for if any of you watching... Um, have kids and you have a trampoline or if you're just a really big kid and you have your own trampoline <laughs> you get you, you you actually use a trampoline quite a bit in a lot of your coaching and you've had me it's, doing it a lot on the on the trampoline I'm not the biggest fan of trampolines to be honest I do it when I see people whose top half and bottom half don't move as one unit yeah it's kind of like the, there's a disjointedness so then I, I try to get them to like um, a Rubik's Cube yeah I want the top and bottom to move as a unit and mm. not like two separate entities. So what's something really quick that somebody could do on a trampoline that would, that would help them with their surfing? Oh, okay. Um, try jump in a straight line, like just in the same spot repeatedly. Yeah. A lot of people struggle for that. And then when you tell people to jump as high as they can, a lot of them do what Hennessy does and they jump and they bend their backs and they almost push the hands down to go higher. Whereas a good jumper would almost keep the back straight and almost spear. Like, if you think of somebody pushing off the wall in a swimming pool, mm. okay, you would spear yourself forward, almost like Superman and glide through the water. Yeah. But some people want to almost like push and they bend their backs. Um, so, yeah, a, a good example of trampoline is just try to yeah. bounce and doing the same place. And use your legs, don't use your hips. Let me share something which, which I found from doing the trampolining and see if, 
see how you then interpret that because one of the things that I really noticed with trampolining was the amount of tension that I would hold and it, it was like in my face and it, uh, uh, yeah, like it was just this I would tense really tense up and I was like well if I'm tensing up on the trampoline I bet you I'm doing that in my surfing and like, doing this freezing or face I nearly uh, said 100% but yes definitely <laughs> so something is adults forget to have fun they seriously they jump on a trampoline like oh my gosh I, I, I don't know if I can do this and they feel really uncoordinated. Mm. And um, I think hours of sitting behind a desk at work, you almost forget how to use your body or, or your body just doesn't remember what it's like to actually jump on trampoline and how yeah. to bend your knees and how to relax, how to breathe and how to have fun. Yeah. So they'll also get fatigued really quick because they hold so much tension. Yeah, yeah. Uh, real quick thing here, Anthea, do you, do you have trampoline drills? In the in the Ombi program, there isn't any trampoline drills. Is no, it? that could be a whole new course in itself. <laughs> not many people have trampolines. Um, it's fair enough going out and buying like a Bosu ball because it's small; it'll fit in your cupboard. But if you go right, you need to get yourself a trampoline, uh, and you and you live in a one-bedroom apartment in the centre of Sydney, so on a balcony. If I got someone to actually do trampolining, I'd probably do it for five minutes, and I'd just teach them yeah. awareness. Once you have that awareness, you can use it for everything else. Yeah. Um, and I'm just going to pop this one up there uh, just because the, the, the community is very big now. So a lot of people probably don't and aren't quite aware of exactly what the community is. Are you guys incorporated with the Surf Hacks on Facebook? So when we broadcast here, we're broadcasting out to our Insiders group, to the Surf Hacks group, to YouTube, and I think a couple of, and a couple of the platforms. So, so Lance, uh, Surf Hacks was actually established by Clayton, uh, so we broadcast into into all of those. Surf Hacks is is the Ombi group. That's the that's a group yes. that that we own. So, so, so yeah, what Surf Hacks is um, is a forum whereby we, if you learn something good in surfing, I want you to share it with someone else. Yeah, and it's, it's kind of there's a movie that came out called Paying It Forward. Yeah, this is and um, yeah, it's it's just because I got frustrated and I always said surfers are stupid. Because if you watch a skateboarder, if, if someone takes a big stack in skateboarding, everyone like goes, wow, that guy's so hardcore. Yeah. And if you take a stack in surfing, you're a kook. Yeah. So surfers almost don't fall enough, so they don't learn enough. And they don't take risks enough. Yeah. So that's why I'm going, like, like, you guys are stupid. It doesn't hurt as much as skateboarding. Yeah. Like, take as much risk as you like. Yeah. Um, let, let, me, um, let me just... It's, it's been a really good opportunity to just quick, quickly bring a couple of things up here. Yeah. Um, and we're just, just, right, so we're going to shift and move slightly off the topic here, uh, off of tonight's topic. So, so first of all, the Surfax community was was a community that was, was set up. So it was a free community that anybody can come in and they can join. They've now that we've built this community out to over sixteen thousand people, I think it is now. We've got this this huge group of people that that know the Ombi the the. The, the, the Ombi theory through through all the different lives and stuff that, that we have done. So the Surf Hacks is a, is, a, is a free community to anybody that wants to improve their surfing and be supported by other surfers in a positive environment. Yeah. That's the key thing here. There's so many groups out there where people get slammed in this, and we wanted this to be a very positive environment. Whether you're a complete beginner and you're doing things that you think might be really kooky, um, or whether you're Somebody who is a lot better, and you and you you want to and you, you want to get uh, maybe just small tweaks and little little pieces yeah. of, of advice. Also, there's there's no bullying or tolerated yeah. inside of that. If you if you are saying something negative or derogatory, yeah, and that's whereabouts I wanted to go with this. Yeah. Um, we have had a couple of people that have decided to leave the Surfax community because they've been getting bullied through the comments. Because the group is so big, it is really hard for us to be able to police it um, completely. If we do see anybody that is bullying within the group or putting any negative comments up, they will be they won't be given a second chance. They'll just be kicked straight out. Yeah. It's fine to like it's 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 fine to have a laugh. It's fine to have a joke, but it's not fine to flat out completely write somebody off in the comments when they're posting stuff up that they're being vulnerable and posting stuff up in the group to get constructive feedback. So yeah. what I'm going to say is we just really want to ask you, please, in the Surfax community, if somebody posts up a video, please be really kind to them um, and give them constructive feedback. Uh, 
I don't mind making a complete kook of myself, and I don't mind you writing me off. Yeah, me um, too. But all it. of the other people in the group, it's we want this to be a really safe environment for everybody to be able to to share their experiences and to be able to grow. Uh, the other side of that is we then have the insiders group, which is for people who have enrolled in the the twelve week program, where we then do do Zoom sessions, uh, and we. We normally do them once a month. We, we, we missed out last month just because of everything that's been going on. But we do live Zoom sessions in there and there's some other benefits of being inside the insiders. But the point I really wanted to make here was please, this Surfax community, it is a positive place for people to be able to have feedback, whether they are beginners, whether they're experienced. And it's a place to have con constructive feedback in a kind way uh, and not bullying. So anyway, that's enough of me having a little, I got, I, some of, we've had a couple of people leave the group um, and I was a little bit angry about it because they were, they were written off um, and I didn't like it. So anyway, on that note, here we go, right. Okay, here we go. Alan, how can we relax in bigger waves of consequence? I find I'm trying to grip the board with my feet. <laughs> the toenails are pulling the wax off. Um, how can you relax in bigger ways of consequence? So I, I know what you mean here, cause you, because basically you're crapping your pants because it's bigger. Yeah. Um, it is hard to relax, you tense up because you're worried I'm going to get smashed. So, when I was big, when I was growing up, I always tried to surf with people that were really confident and I'd sit next to them because mm. if I walked out with someone that was nervous I almost picked up on that energy and I felt terrible yeah so um, I never try to surf with with a nervous bunch of people I always try to go with the, the guys catching the best waves and you, you almost want to get a bit of their luck if you want to call it that yeah because the guys in the nervous group have got bad luck and the guys in the good group have got good luck. So you, you kind of want to get their wave magnet and try to get some of their waves. So that's one thing. Um, secondly, is just slowly introduce yourself. Probably, what I mean by that, don't just go out and catch the first wave. Yeah. Like do due diligence, like how many sets are there, where they're coming, so that you don't get caught unaware. Because awareness out there is also really important. Yeah. Um, then once you've done that, you've done your due diligence and you're out there, try to get your first wave as soon as you can. Mm. The, the reason being behind that is that if you stew out there, in other words, you're thinking, normally if you're nervous and anxious, you're going to be thinking negative thoughts. Yeah. But as soon as you get your first one under the belt, you go, oh, that wasn't so bad. And then you're a lot more willing to catch a second, third and fourth wave. But the longer you leave it, the worse it gets. Yeah, that kind of reminds me of when you see someone who goes to bungee jump and they're stood there. I'm going to jump on three. And then they go, whoa, whoa, whoa. one, two, and three. Then, no, I'm going to jump uh, on five. And then they get the jitters. <laughs> and then and then you like, you know it's game over. And they're never actually going to jump unless they're physically pushed. And I've yeah. seen you physically push people into waves and I've also felt it. Yeah, I'll push people into waves yeah. so they can't. Yeah. Uh, okay, guys, do your modules follow a specific order or which module would you recommend to start with for a beginner? The 12 week program is the, is everything now structured uh, and set out in stone for you. If you wanted more information about a singular module, then you're best off to private so, message. So Dali, it's, it works on this idea. You, you first need education around what you want to do. Then you need to do some kind of simulation training around what you want to do. And then when you're in the water, have fun and try to use your awareness along with what you've learned. So we don't teach people how to surf, we teach you how to move, yep. and we try to teach people awareness in the water. Okay, we're, we're coming up for the, for, for the, for the hour mark. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna start to try to wind this in. There's a, there's a really cool thing I wanna show you in just a moment. So we're gonna bring the iPad back up again. Uh, but look, so when it's, when it's flat, there is there's surf skating that you can do. If you've got a cardboard surfer, there's a cardboard surfer. Yep. If there is, if you've got a BOSU ball, you can do BOSU. If there's trampoline, you can do, you can, you can do some trampoline stuff. Um, there is so much that you can do to help you so, do muscle memory to create and, and create awareness. Also, if you're a decent surfer, do everything switch. So start training the left side of your brain or the right side yeah. of the brain. Um, the same way if you try to brush your teeth with the other hand, it's really, really difficult. You've got to think about it. Mm. Just firing those new, neutrons or neurons, neurons, whatever those things are called, um, and just doing it differently 
it, it's it's fun and um, yeah. Yep. It's good uh, Luke's jumped in in the comments there. Luke, our, our main man, who one day will hopefully be sat here with us. Uh, but Luke uh, is saying that we'll be introducing more moderators in the community in a few weeks. So if you have noticed some stuff going on, then please just bring it to our attention. Um, and all we can say is, like, we, we apologise if there is stuff that you see that you don't like. We're doing our best. Um, but yeah, hopefully we should get on top of that. A uh, few people... A few people are agreeing with... Uh, people were saying, OK, that, that's fine. OK, I know I had a bit of a rant. Uh, normally, me, I'm full of excitement, but it uh, had to be said. So a few people agreeing. Let's just have a quick look. Let's have a look here. Uh, yeah, Surfax community you built is awesome. Here we go, lots of messages coming through here. Um, oh, here we, here, here we go. Now, this is interesting. Liam, somewhat relevant to this. I broke my neck a few weeks ago and got any specific tips on courage when getting back on a board. I've been out on a mat, mat, a, a, mat a few times, but I'm a little concerned and scared to pop up. Liam, whew, interesting question. Uh, so for, you, for those of you that are new to this and you don't know, I broke my neck back at, in January, at the very beginning of January. I was in a surfing incident, broke my neck uh, in one place and my back in two places. And then went home and put a and then, yeah. gun on it. <laughs> <laughs> didn't, didn't know, actually know that I'd broken my neck at, at that point in time. I put one of those massage guns into it. So what, I've, what, so what I initially started doing was I just went out on a soft top in, a, in places where I knew that it wasn't really pitching waves. They were just, so I was surfing down at Corumbin Alley and just in nice sort of slow moving waves where I knew that it was deeper water so that if I did fall off, I'd be fine. Um, so... That was sort of, I, I did that for, for a few weeks to just get back into the feel of it and didn't beat myself up, just kind of just went nice and nice and easy with it. And then, yeah, in the end, I, I, I honestly think that by doing that, by going in on the, on the soft up and just sort of building it back up again and just going, oh, do you know what? I'm, I'm cool. I'd probably come back more confident, haven't I? Way more confident, yeah. definitely. I also think you started watching videos of Torrin yeah. Martin. And you, you, from wanting to just be an aggressive surfer, you, you started thinking about flowing and you started riding slightly longer boards. So you didn't rush your, your recovery and your getting back into surfing. And you learn how to actually start to use the wave energy as a yeah. positive thing, not a negative thing. And then you weren't scared of waves anymore. And I think that was a big learning curve for you. Yeah. Uh, the, the, so since that, there have, there have been a couple of times when we've gone surfing in places where I know that it's a bit shallow yeah. and it's quite a pitchy sort of wave and I've second guessed myself a couple of times. Um, but I think the key is to not overthink it. And, and don't push yourself way out of your comfort zone too soon. Just go at, go at a pace that feels right to you. That's, yeah, that's probably the best piece of advice that, that, that I can give. Go at a pace that feels right to you. There's somebody asking here, they've asked a comment a few times, Sean, do you do one-on-one -on -one lessons? Uh, yes, but just just private message through um, to ask about one-on-one -on -one lessons. But yes, that is a possibility if you live on the Gold Coast. Okay. There we go. There's the website, ombi.co. Thanks, Matt. Saves me, <laughs> saves me bringing up a link. So one other thing I want to show you quickly before. Uh, if you haven't downloaded it yet, then make sure that you download. Hopefully the screen will pick up on it. But there is the... Oh, my screen's just gone white. Hang on. We've got the Ombi app. So there's a whole bunch of free stuff in there. Then you've got access to the to the to the 12 week program. But there is there is so much stuff inside the app. You've got the free the free analysis, all the different modules that, that are, are available to you. So make sure that you download the app. That's on Android and on Apple. And then just, also if you're gonna buy go search try buy the program on the website and then download the app. Yeah, you're, you're buying, so if you want to enrol in, in, in the 12-week program, we are, we're still just in week one, and at the present moment in time, anybody who enrolls now, uh, me and Claire are going to jump on every four weeks and do a live session with all the 12-weekers, uh, as you're the first group of people that are going through to sort of, sort of check in and see how, how you're going. Uh, so that's one of the benefits of, of jumping in now, and you're also going to be joining a, quite a large community of people that are also going through the program at exactly the same time. So I think they're just about to move into week two. Yep. So if you jumped in to week one now, then you just, uh, just just do two weeks in one and then you catch up and then you can join the, the live Zoom sessions. In the future, the, the, we will still do 
Zoom sessions, but they won't be specific for the 12 week program. Reading this. Yeah, but uh, so just very quickly. So, but if you do want to purchase, do it through the website as opposed to through the app. You'll get a much better um, experience uh, buying it through the, the website than you will do through the app uh, just for the minute. Uh, but yeah, anyway, let's, uh, let's, 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 let's jump into this. Oh, I'm all excited now. Right, hang on. Here we go. Let me switch the cameras around. So a little bit of Mikey February. I'm going to let you, so you saw this and you wanted to show it for um, one other reason. And there's one thing I noticed, which I'm going to bring up afterwards. Right, go. Um, a couple of guys today asked about the pop-up. It's like, when do the hands leave? Some guys, the hands are down and the foot comes up first and then blah, 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 blah. I'm like, guys, you're overthinking it. Like, don't stress about the small little nuances. What you want to focus on is look where you want to go and just get your hands up. So the earlier Steph got her hands up, the straighter her back was. Mm. And then you can move really well. Okay, so the first thing, Mikey's paddling in. Look how high the chin is off the board. So that is what we call the Oreo biscuit. The Oreo biscuit. Yeah, so you need to get familiar with it. Um, one... Two, he glides in from there. He's, he's kind of doing a nice slow push up. He's not rushing. He then goes back foot on, front foot on. Can you see where his knees are? Pretty much in the direction that he wants to go. To infinity and beyond. Yeah, so it's the same. Wherever you want to run, make sure your knees point there and your body will head in that direction. A lot of people stand up in side on postures and mm. they don't move really well. Okay. And so knees are pointing where he wants to go, looking where he wants to go. And look at the extension. Look at the elbows up. He then drops in. Knees are lunging. Look at that. Look at that full extension. Absolutely love it. Look at the elbows up. So that's what we call the, the trampoline where you're extending. And yeah. if you look at the dry that he gets on those little spots over there, um, that's the cardboard slide that we talk about as well. Yeah. So th there's so much that we're doing with inside these programs that are going to benefit your surfing if you know what to look for. And now that we've sort of educated you guys on what to look for, you need to take that awareness and just start to apply it to your training or your surfing or your everyday use. Yeah. I know there's something you want to say. Yeah, so I know there is. Uh, just, just very quickly... Um, Darian was just, so if, if, if you're doing some of the BOSU work and you've got one of those BOSU that's got those annoying grippy plugs at the side, uh, I, I had them on my BOSU. David answered the question for me, but I'm going to bring it up into the broadcast. Just remove the, they just, the, 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 mine just pop, oh, yeah, they yeah. just pop straight off, mine did. Uh, so yeah, just take those off because they do get in the way. They're a little bit annoying. Yeah, they could also hurt your toe if you're going barefoot in the BOSU ball. So yeah. Good. Okay, cool. Let me remove that down. But there you go. So, this is one of the things that I noticed. And so I got this clip, did a little bit of editing, put it into Coach's eye. And then as I was scrolling through it, just before we came on live, I was just checking that it was that we had all the bits that, 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 that we needed. I'm, I'm stuttering. I'm tripping over my own, my own words here. This bit here. Oh, my word. You know what I'm stoked about is look at how your awareness has grown. Yeah. Well, that's what happens. Like you're starting to see more and more and more. And it's, it's fantastic. I get excited about that too. Okay. So, I was thinking about that whole idea of coming out and doing a bottom turn and how, I think, if... Okay, can I ask you a question? What are you trying to do in a bottom turn? What's the aim of it? Get back up to the top. Yes, you're trying to go up. Okay, so, had, had if we were to rewind now, I wouldn't have answered the question like that. I've answered the question because I know the answer that Clayton was looking for. Um, but, but how... You should have asked a question in the comments and everyone could have typed it in. Oh, shit, but sorry. with the bottom turn, what, what are we looking to do to get back up to the top of the wave? I never even thought about that before. Like, I, <laughs> I don't know what. I, I was like, I don't know, turn. That's what I would have thought before. But with the bottom turn, I always... And you probably... I'm, I'm assuming that you're probably going to think very similar to what I do. In that I used to think the bottom turn is like this sort of, sort of powerful move. Like sort of really sort of like leaning in, pushing down on the board to do this movement and to come back up again. This here, watch, just watch really slowly. So he's coming in to do to do the turn, and then watch as he makes himself lighter. Just what I want you to pay attention to is his 
feet. His ankles. His feet, he is on his toes. His back foot even I don't know if he... actually comes off, the, it's, it's got a bit pixelated, but his back foot actually moves. Look there. There it is. His back foot. I, before, before Ombi, before the days of Ombi, <laughs> I would have been convinced that I had to sort of really push on that board to be able to do that turn. And he, he, is, he is taking him, he is literally jumping off of the board. So, like just he's oh, basically oh. stacking on the front foot. <laughs> That's what's happened to my brain yeah. tonight. He's stacking on the front foot and he's doing a sensitive toe side adjustment to get the rail buried. So I, I, I love it. And look at how when he does it, the elbows are up. Uh, John, John noticed it. Uh, the, so that, qu that comment came in before I started explaining it. I've just noticed it. John, uh, he almost got the board airborne as he extends cardboard surface style. So yeah, so, so you, you saw it as well. Uh, Mikey's on a trampoline. He is. He's on yeah. a water-based trampoline. Uh, so if you look at it that way in terms of moving and going up, you can see the technique that he's using. Yeah. And that's what I love about Steph Gilmore is that I feel that she's surfing effortlessly yeah. and her style looks good. And you'll find that most of the style masters all look the same using the same technique. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's really, really good. I think there's another bit I put in here. Oh, oh, oh. I think it was... Was it this? There was something else I put in here for some reason. And I got... Maybe it was this one. I don't know, all of it, all of it. Yeah, it's, it's all pretty darn good. I'm sure that he does, maybe it was this. No, I was back to the beginning again, it was all of it. I'm sure that there was something else that I put in there. But just look at how, how light he is. Yeah, so what, I'm, what I like about this, if we go back here, see how he's not standing on the board? So a lot of people make the mistake when they do a top turn is they stand on the board. And that would be almost street skating if you're standing on the board. Yeah. But if you're in a bowl, when you ride the ball, you actually go sideways on the ball. So you don't stand on your skateboard and your central fugal force keeps you up there. Mm. And that's why I recommend, once you've got your basics down, try to start taking your skate, surf skating into a bowl. Yeah. You don't have to go super high, but just get used to being off balance in your turning. Yeah. But I think in a nutshell, we, uh, we hit our mark today. I think... We did. Hopefully that's been, uh, been valuable for you. Liam, one other quick thing. One other quick thing, Liam. Uh, you were asking the question about confidence and the whole neck breaking thing. One thing which I have, I mentioned on the last live, we haven't forgotten about it, and I think that it would be super valuable for everybody, is that whole idea of how to fall off. How to fall off. So well, that is, only do YouTube that, like yeah, it. so that, that is coming up. We haven't forgot about it. It is, it is going to be there, but learning how to fall off of a surfboard would definitely give me a lot more, a lot more confidence, especially after... Um, obviously hurting, hurting my, my neck. So guys, hopefully you found that useful. Leave us a little useful or, or we hey or whatever you, or you in the comments is entirely up to you. Uh, we will be back again in two weeks time. Uh, in, the in, the, in the new studio, which we're sorry, the, the new studio which we're over that way there. But guys, thanks for tuning in this evening. We had a good little turnout tonight. And uh, yeah, guys, as I say, if you see anything in the community, then please let us know. We will work uh, as hard as we can on trying to make sure that it does remain a place that is safe for you to come and get your surfing and, analyzed and, um, and just be amazing. Cockadoodle do, I love it. I'm gonna ask it up on the screen. <laughs> Cockadoodle do. You. <laughs> I was gonna say, anybody doing the 12 week program, like if, if they learn something, please share it. Yeah. Um, honestly, pay it forward. There's so much bad information in surfing. If we can get good information and share it with that group, um, it's going to make for more coaches, more guys giving feedback within the group, um, more surfers are having more fun. And I think in this day and age, especially with um, the times that we're going through, yeah. everyone could do with a bit more lightheartedness and more fun. Absolutely. I've put enough comments up on the screen tonight. Uh, there's a lot of thank yous coming in. Guys, if you have typed in thank you, then thank you. If you haven't typed in thank you, then I know that you're saying thank you inside your head. Uh, so, so thank you anyway. If you haven't downloaded the Ombi app yet, make sure you jump on, make sure you download the app. We'll see you in two weeks' time, but until any, then... Any topics for next uh, two weeks' uh, time? No, if you, um, don't comment below. Uh, no, yeah, co co comment below. It will annoy the crap out of Nico. Uh, <laughs> what would you like us to talk about in the, in the next live? It, it won't be the falling off one in two weeks' time because we need to film some content of people falling off. Um, but what would you like us to cover? 
Put it in the comments below. Nico will have a good look at it and he will get really irritated by me saying that. But guys, until next time, we are officially going to disappear now. Cheerio. Toodle pip and all that. Thanks for tuning in. I've made it really awkward. <laughs>